how peace begins at birth. 35 years ago, I became a teenage mother. My daughter Deja was born gently and safely at home. And really, my first experience of having a baby was about as lovely and wonderful as birth can be. And though I didn't know it at the time, it set my feet on a path that eventually led to me becoming a childbirth author and a midwife. So I became a, an avid searcher after childbirth knowledge, and I found out that the research shows us that being born without trauma is the foundation for having an intact capacity to love and trust. And I feel that healthy societies are made up of loving and trusting individuals. People that guard and protect their environment and take care of each other and their trees and their animal kingdom friends and people that become stewards of our land, air, and water. These are the people that have the potential to make peace rather than war. And so I became convinced that if we were to survive as a species, we needed to bring more human beings into the world gently. And then something else happened. 20 years ago, Christine Yaley Kim died of a complication of her pregnancy. Medical interventions that began in her youth led to hypertensive disorders that caused problems with Christine's heart and circulation. And toward the end of that pregnancy, she suffered a stroke in her sleep, and she never woke up. Christine was my younger sister. Christine and the baby she was carrying died in the United States of America. They died in the country that spends more on pregnancy and childbirth technology than any other country on this planet. According to a study done by Amnesty International called Deadly Delivery, there is a health care crisis in America that sees between two and three women die every single day on Earth. That's just in America. Worldwide, it's much bigger of a problem. Worldwide, nearly a thousand women die from complications of pregnancy and childbirth. That's every single day of the year. The other really discouraging fact is that these statistics are shockingly high, but they are understated because of a lack of effective data collection in the United States and may I add in the world. We just really don't know how many mothers and babies we're losing on a day-to-day -day basis. The people that are most at risk, most affected, are minorities, women of color, Native American women, the poor, the marginalized, the women who are immigrants and have little or no English, those are the women most at risk for dying in childbirth in the United States. My sister had health insurance. She should have been warned by her doctors of the risks, but she was a minority and she fell through the cracks and she died. My response to this grief caused me to eventually follow the path of becoming a midwife. Soon after my sister's death, my family and I moved to Bali, where Bali being such a fertile place, I fell pregnant with my last baby, my son Hanuman. And what I found was that myself and the other pregnant women I came to know on this island were having a very difficult time getting adequate health care and birth services. And then Dr. Ines Asante came to my home, and she and she showed me the study she had conducted for UNICEF, which proved that the leading cause of adult death on this island was hemorrhage after childbirth. And she begged me to be one of the people trying to do something about it. And so, with a lot of devoted Indonesian volunteers, we began to hold prenatal care clinics in my home Eventually, we involved local midwives and our Department of Health in the Regency of Ganyar, and 
Step by step, we opened the Yaya San Bumi Sehat Community Health and Childbirth Clinic in the village of New Kuni. Yaya San means not for profit. Bumi is the earth as a mother, and Sehat is healthy. So Yaya San Bumi Sehat means Healthy Mother Earth Foundation. Our focus is equality and reproductive health care. We bring babies into the world. We give prenatal care. We provide vitamins for our moms because their nutrition is just not adequate. We do postpartum care. We support breastfeeding. We're very, very devoted to breastfeeding because a child in Indonesia is 300 times more likely to die in the first year of her life if she's fed infant formula. The problem with infant formula corruption in our medical system, not only in this country but all over the world, is that no one has figured out how to make money on breast milk. And so babies die for business. We build clinics, we staff them, we support midwifery students, we patch up wounds and we treat illnesses and we pick up trash. We even have an organic garden and a youth center. We bring babies gently into the world. And we advocate for the most marginalized, low-income people of all islands and all faiths and cultures. Most of us realize that following natural disasters, reproductive health care falls by the wayside. When everything's destroyed, everything falls by the wayside, but reproductive health really goes out the window. And when hospitals with technology and equipment are destroyed, midwives come in really handy because whether, with or without electricity, with or without running water, with or without equipment, we midwives can deliver babies. We found that even shelter is optional because when babies are ready, they just come. In December of 2004, a 9.3 earthquake destroyed Aceh, Indonesia. Bumi Sehat was an early responder to that disaster because as an Indonesian NGO, we were able to get in very quickly. We were quite close to the epicenter and we taught the grandmothers and surviving midwives in our area how to receive babies into the world safely, even in the most devastated place on the planet at that time. We brought in medical supplies and tents and food and drinking water and we brought our heart in our hands. Eventually with the help of our donors and sponsors from Indonesia and all over the world we were able to build the Yayasan Bumi Sehat Community Health Clinic in Aceh. Special thanks to the Rotary and Direct Relief International for making it happen. And since we are the only viable healthcare facility for the people in that area, we don't have an exit strategy. We really work hard. We have an amazing team out there. And we're stubborn. When everyone says, the tsunami's over, get out of there, we just keep on keeping on. And it isn't easy without funding. Our experience in Aceh led us to be called as an early responder to the earthquake in Yogyakarta in 2006. We were also in Padang in 2008 after the earthquake. And in 2010, when Haiti was totally destroyed, Bumi Sehat was there building a reproductive health center and helping women and children survive in the worst of conditions. Right now, as we sit here and as I stand here speaking, someone on our planet is dying from a complication of pregnancy or childbirth. And this tragedy, tragedy is going to be repeated more than a thousand times, to, on nearly a thousand times today and every day. It happened yesterday, it'll happen again. These, these deaths are due largely to the side effects of poverty, malnutrition, and lack of skilled care. Yeah. According to a report 
done by the World Health Organization, the UNFPA, UNICEF, and the World Bank called Trends in Maternal Mortality. We're going to lose 42 moms in this hour. Every single hour, 42 moms. The costs of childbirth are so high that the resources of your average low or middle income family are exhausted and they spiral down into a cycle of suffering and loss just when they should be receiving and celebrating the birth of their babies. In Indonesia, of every 1,000 babies born alive, 29 will not make it to his or her first birthday. On Earth, of every 1,000 babies born alive, 44 will not make it. Midwifery is fraught with responsibility. It's stressful. We midwives don't get a whole lot of sleep, no matter how badly we need it. In fact, a woman would have to be crazy, maybe even a witch, to want to be a midwife. But the rewards are pretty amazing. The rewards are bringing healthy children into the arms of their healthy, happy mothers. The rewards are building families on a foundation of peace and gentle ways. The rewards are of the heart. Most of us are aware of the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, which are meant to be achieved by the year 2015. That's less than four years away. The goals that Bumi Sehat is most involved with achieving is goal number four, reducing infant mortality, goal number five, improving maternal health, and goal number six, combating the spread of HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. Sometimes we feel it's hopeless to try to attain these goals, but then we just get to work and do it. And believe me, every single baby, every single mother, every single family really counts. These goals represent a basic human right to decent health care. So what's behind the What's behind the statistics that I'm giving out? Lots of people working really hard and lots and lots of families. Five years ago, a young woman named Kadek Sutriani came into the Bumi Sehat Clinic for her first prenatal visit. Up until that time, she had had no care at all, but she just found us finally. And she was nearly nine months pregnant. Unfortunately, we midwives could find no fetal heartbeat. Kadek's baby died one week before he was born. And after the stillbirth of Kadek and her husband Wayan's child, we visited the family at home, and we found that they were living in a hovel with their five-year-old daughter. This is here in Ubud. They were surviving off one or two servings of white rice with salt and coconut oil every day. And that neither Kadek nor her husband had had a job since the Bali bombs. But then we got to know her a little better, and we found out that Kadek is actually a seamstress. And so Brenda from Bali Buddha, who's on our board, bought Kadek a sewing machine. And now she has more work than she can handle. The clothes I'm wearing right now were made by Kadek's hands. It took a lot of courage for Kadek and Wayan to try again, but they waited years, and finally they decided to have another baby. She went regularly to prenatal care at Bumi Sehat. She took the free vitamins that our donors provide. She even attended our prenatal yoga classes. And just a few nights ago, Kadek gave birth gently to such a beautiful baby girl. And her husband wept because this daughter was born alive. In Ache, we face even more difficulties as midwives. A woman named Zabaida in Samatiga Ajay bled to death about four and a half years ago following the birth of her fifth child. Her husband just didn't think that she needed help, so he called for no one when she went into labor because her first four children were born alive and well with no complications. 
but he didn't take into consideration that she'd been surviving now for quite a long time on white rice and noodles, which we call the tsunami survivor diet. Both Zabaida and her husband were suffering from hypertension because of the stress of losing their four children in the tsunami and their home. In fact, they didn't even have enough adequate, decent drinking water. So when the baby was born and Zabaida's husband realized that his wife was really bleeding too much, he ran to get the Bidan Kampong, the traditional birth attendant nearby. And when this grandmother ran to the little shack where they were living, she saw that her skills were not enough, that Zabaida needed medical care quickly, but she had no hand phone and she had no transportation. And she sent a neighbor on bicycle to the Bumi Sehat clinic, where our ambulance immediately dispatched with a doctor and a midwife. When they arrived, it was too late. Zabaida had already died. And because she was not alive to breastfeed, her little son soon also died. But because of her death and the death of many others that we witnessed in Aceh, we decided to do something very special that we're really proud of. We organized the Bidan Kampong, the traditional birth attendants of Aceh. It's hard for me not to cry when I look at their pictures because they're my best friends. And now in Aceh, these women who have Bumi Sehat handphones, we buy their phone plans, they have monthly trainings, and each and every birth in the Samatiga area is attended by these grandmothers and by a trained Bumi Sehat qualified midwife. This is a partnership that saves lives. It's really working. Bumi Sehat, we live in times of trauma, and yet I believe that it's the little individual ideas and solutions that we come up with ourselves from our hearts and that we share with our communities that are going to make our world a safer place. Let me say HOT is a really small NGO, and yet we've demonstrated a model of care that's effective, inexpensive, and sustainable. We're really proud of it. I believe that culturally appropriate woman-to-woman -woman care, the midwifery model of care, is really going to address those issues of saving infant lives and mothers' lives. I believe that our solution, which is community-based, is much more effective than projects that throw billions of dollars at childbirth technology. If you want to help mothers and babies to survive, please support midwives, because they are the guardians of childbirth. As I spoke, 18 minutes have passed, maybe a little more. And in this 18 minutes, 12 mothers died from complications of their pregnancy or birth. Also in this 18 minutes, 28 babies died while they were being born. And 34 more babies were stillborn. And 103 babies died before they reached one month of age. In fact, Ibu Brenda just got a phone call a baby, about a baby that was newborn that just died in Dempasar, someone we know. That's 177 young lives lost. And remember that nearly 1,000 women, the number is actually 981 women dying every day. 981 women who were not sick, they're in the prime of their lives and they're doing the most natural thing in the world, having a baby. Now imagine that two 747 airplanes fell out of the sky every single day, loaded with passengers that would be 832 people dying every day. Now if that happened every day, how many of you would get on an airplane? I don't think you would. And yet women continue to have the courage to have babies. My name is Robin Lynn, and I represent an amazing group of people, over 50 working in Bali, 15 working in Aceh, and donors and supporters and volunteers from all over the world. And yes, we are passionate. Thank you.